come on right where you are with hope and open hearts this morning. Come on, just receive from him. Father, we come in the name of Jesus, the name that is above every name. We stand before you this morning, and Father, you know exactly what we need today. Come on, just where you are. If you have a need, just open your hands. Open your hands in front of you and say, Father, I come with my need. I come with my praise, but I come with an open heart, and I come with a need. And so, Father, this morning, I pray that you would pour yourself in that you would fill every heart, you would fill every life. Father, you know exactly what is needed. Father, for people this morning that need your strength, strengthen them. For people that need your hope, bring hope. Lord, for people that need your healing, bring healing. Lord, for people that need a way forward where they seem stuck, I pray, Father, that you would make a way open. Father, where there seems to be nothing but death, I pray that you would bring life. Father, where there is hurt, bring healing. Father, these things we bring to you this morning. Father, where there is need that you would bring provision, we come in Jesus' name. And so, Father, fill every heart and every life. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Well, good morning. My name's Russell. It's my beautiful wife, Nikki, on the front row there. You can all take a seat. Hey, worship team, let's give it up for them this morning. Didn't they do a great job? Love that new song. What a great song. Wonderful. And uh, happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. And uh, it's good good to be back from holidays. We had a a great break. And, uh, well, it's Father's Day, so, hey, let, let me be honest, the highlight of my holiday was I organised my shed. <laughs> Isn't that a Father's Day thing to do? I organised my shed. There you go. No, we had a great holiday and uh, we, Nick and I had a great time away together and then we spent a little bit of time at home and caught up on some things. And I was thinking one of the things that fathers always seem to be, a con- oh, well, I don't know how it is in your family, but I seem to be a constant source of amusement to my family. In fact, I think it's actually a dad's role to be a source of amusement. And, uh, and I think... Uh, Nikki's highlight of her holiday was me amusing her. I, I went to sleep on the plane. As you do. Who likes to sleep on a plane? Not really, but anyway, I did. I slept on the plane. I don't know what it is lately. I've just, I've just been having some vivid dreams. And I'm dreaming on the plane. I'm, I can remember the dream. I'm, I'm on a tree branch that's kind of like not t- attached very well and it's swinging out over a ravine from one side and then back over land again and then back out over a ravine. But I could see the branch was going to break and I don't know what on earth I was doing, but I'm on this branch and in my dream, I'm, like, I'm sound asleep, I'm on the plane, and in my dream I thought, when this branch gets across on land, I've got to jump off the branch. And so the branch swings over the land and so I'm jumping off the branch and I sort of couldn't get off, I'm stuck and I'm jumping off the branch and next minute I'm on my hands and knees in the aisle on the plane. <laughs> True story. I fell out of the seat. I'm on the aisle on my hands and knees in the plane. And people are looking at me like, what's with this man? I literally jumped out of my seat and fell on the passageway. There you go. So it's a dead seat. Yeah, the moral of the story is wear your seatbelt, okay? There you go. Did I feel embarrassed or What? Because apparently on the way over, I started yelling in my sleep. And the guy in front turned around and looked at me. And I wasn't saying bomb or anything like that. Never mind. <laughs> well, happy Father's Day. And uh, we're in for a great day today. And uh, look, we've got a video. Ben's done his great Father's Day video that he's got for us. So let's have a quick look at what some kids say about their fathers. Uh, power of thoughts. Probably to teleport to me whenever he wanted. He loves me a lot. You could um, turn into any animal you want. 
flying. Super strength. Probably super strength. Because he always just walks and stuff while we're just inside the house. I'm not really too sure because he's already good at a lot of things. I don't think he needs any superpowers to be any better. Making people laugh and being really funny and just trying to make you have the best time that you can have. Hug. Super strength. Super funny. <laughs> Super cook <quick> power. <laughs> yeah. No. No. He says yes if I use my manners, no if I don't. Oh, um, bye. We, we don't, like, he, he says bye to me a lot because, like, he doesn't, like, like when we go to school and when I leave for church sometimes that you love me. He normally says no. For us to go on walks with him or for us to go quick so that we're not late for school. I love you Bella Jane, you are my best friend. Probably he's just asking me to help him do this or help him do that or most of that, most of the time. Like, um, don't give up, you can still do it. He always be kind if someone needs help, and yeah. No. Um, I'm going to the gym. <laughs> and also, he also, sometimes prays for me a lot. You'll be having naughty. <laughs> to turn off the lights. Then he tells jokes. That he's funny and he makes me laugh a lot. He's funny. He plays video games in the morning. Probably that he plays with me a lot. Uh, that he ducks me into bed and plays a little tiny play before I go to bed for some, for some love. How he helps a lot and he's amazing. That most of the time he's funny and when we ask for help he would mainly come and help if he has nothing to do. That he loves me. Probably his kindness, then sometimes he likes to help out with others and helps with each other and all that. Daddy always chases me. He always um, tries to play with me. He, he tries to make some time that, so he can spend time with me and all that. His hugs. That he makes yummy food and Sometimes he secretly takes us to KFC or McDonald's or Hungry Jack's after school. That he's always there when, on a special occasion. Um, he always like plays with me or does stuff with me. He's funny and whenever we're doing like fight challenge, he lets me win so that I don't get hurt. Um, that he's with me and he's uh, my favourite dad in the world. <laughs> yeah, good job. Making you laugh was a big, was up there, wasn't it? You have to admit, it was up there, definitely up there. Wonderful. Well, listen, I understand on Father's Day um, for day. The fact is I woke up this morning thinking about some that I know for Father's Day is incredibly tough. And I uh, just want you to know this morning that God knows. And whatever the day is, whatever Father's Day is for you, he has, his heart is to minister to and strengthen you. And I trust this morning that that's what you will find, that you'll find his strength and his grace that's here for you today. And uh, so let's talk about Father's Day. I guess I want to talk about this morning, there's, there's actually three kind of fathers. 
is firstly there's earthly fathers. We have earthly fathers and Exodus chapter 20 and verse 12 tells us how we are to treat our earthly fathers. It talks about honouring your father and your mother, honouring your parents. And it's very important that we understand this this morning because um, the fact is none of us are perfect parents, none of us are perfect fathers. We never had perfect fathers. And, uh, but it's important that we learn to honour them because it's actually a command. It's actually one of the commandments. And it's so important that we do that because we learn to honour the position of fathering. You know, when I say to a judge, yes, your honour, I'm not making a value judgment on his character or a lot of other things. I'm respecting who he is and the position that he holds in my life. And respect starts at home. And that's why it's so important that we learn to honour our mother and our father. But today, obviously, it's Father's Day. But honouring uh, is what we do to earthly fathers. Um, secondly, we have, we have earthly fathers, first, with, and they're to be honoured, but we also have a heavenly father, and our heavenly father is to be imitated. We have a, a, a heavenly father, Matthew 5, 16. It says, In the same way, let your light shine before men, that they may see your good deeds, and praise your father in heaven. How many of you are glad this morning that you've got a heavenly father? You know, Matthew, Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Matthew 6, 9, he says, when you pray, pray like this. He says, what? Our, our Father, our Father in heaven. We have a heavenly Father. And the fact is, we are to imitate him. He is our example. He's the one we aspire to this morning. In fact, the scripture tells us um, in Matthew 5, verse 48, it says, be per perfect, therefore, even as your heavenly Father is perfect. Wow, ouch. This is Jesus talking, and he says, Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. Now, the test for perfection, he's not saying that you have to be, you, you are, I'm, well, let me put it this way. The test of, is direction, not perfection. The fact is, he is the one that we aim to imitate. He is the perfect Father who believes that this morning. And the direction of our feet is always to imitate and to set him as our example and the one that we, that we seek to emulate. And uh, that's why the scripture says to work out. You know, the fact is we have been made perfect already through Jesus Christ. But now we work out what God has done in us and we emulate, we learn to emulate and be made into the image of our Father. So we imitate our Heavenly Father. So we have an earthly Father, which is to be honoured. You have a Heavenly Father, which is to be imitated. But you also have a third kind of Father. And that Father Paul talks about, um, and it's, let me just put the term out there, it's spiritual fathers. Spiritual fathers. In 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 14 and 15, Paul says this, he says, I'm writing this not to shame you, but to warn you as my dear children. So already you have this, this paternal, Paul is talking about the church as his dear children. He says, even though you have 10,000 guardians, another version says, even though you have 10,000 teachers in Christ, you do not have many fathers. For in Christ Jesus, I became your father through the gospel. So here we have a very clear picture and a clear understanding that not only do we have earthly fathers, and they can be manied and varied, and uh, you know some have been wonderful. For, I'm, I'm so thankful this morning that I had a great earthly father, and it's seven years since he passed on, and I miss him dearly. But we have earthly fathers, we have a heavenly father, but we also have spiritual fathers. And Paul here is talking about, about being a spiritual father. Now, I want you to know this morning, this is not just a message for men. Uh, this is a message for women as well. In fact, Paul, even talking about um, the church in Galatians, he says in chapter 4 and verse 19, he describes, it says, for My dear children, for whom I am again in the pains of childbirth. There you go. Until Christ is formed in you. But there was also that maternal aspect, if you like, of, of the people who Paul fathered. Um, but, but Paul goes on and in Titus, he talks about um, Paul giving, instructing older women to teach younger women how to live godly lives. And there's instances, many instances of women fathering, uh, sorry, mothering, mothering younger women. So this is a message this morning for all of us. Uh, women are not off the hook. 
But today, I want to, so, but I want to talk about and underline and make really clear what a spiritual father and fathering looks like. And so when I say I'm going to use the word fathering from now on, but women, like I said, you're not excluded from this. I want you to think about how, because the same principle I'm bringing this morning applies to us all today. So what does a spiritual father look like? Um, earthly fathers are to be honoured. Heavenly father is to be imitated. A spiritual father, I think, is to be valued because Paul tells us that they're rare. He says, we have many teachers, but not many fathers. So I think we need to really value, if you've been fortunate enough to have people to become, who've become a spiritual father in your life, I think we need to really value them. Um, but also, I think we need to, there's not many of them. I think this world, this, this, this fatherless world, this fatherless world needs spiritual dads, spiritual mums. I think we should aspire to become spiritual mums and dads. As a church, we've been talking about legacy. Um, we've been thanking God for the legacy passed to us and how we're passing on a legacy to the next generation. So we're generational builders. Let me tell you, the heart behind that is spiritual fathering. If we're going to see spiritual generations, if we're going to see the church go from strength to strength, from generation, one generation, commending your works to another, there is no greater need for the whole understanding and having a revelation of being a spiritual father and a spiritual mother in the house. And it's not just an age thing. It's not just someone older with someone younger, but someone in a different stage of life. You can, you can be a spiritual father to someone older than you, talking spiritually speaking. And so this morning, it's important that we understand and what, what does it mean? That, what does it look like to be a spiritual father or a spiritual mother? Because not everybody gets to be a spiritual father. Mother, for a whole lot of reasons. But every one of us who follow Jesus can become spiritual fathers and mothers in the kingdom of God. So this morning, here's what I want, this is what I want you to grab onto. And it's a little different to my usual style of message. But this morning, I just want to, um, don't, don't get scared, um, but I'm going to take the word spiritual and I'm going to show you from that word what a spiritual father looks like. Aren't you glad it's not the word anti-disestablishmentarianism? Anti That's a lot of points. But spiritual, so I'm going to run through them. Are you ready? So this is what a spiritual father does. So number one, spiritual father sees. S stands for sees. They often see more in you than you see in yourself. A spiritual father or mother can see in you what you can't even see in yourself. They don't just see your limitations. They don't just see your faults. They don't just see your immaturity. They don't just see your age, but they see the potential of what you are becoming. A spiritual father and mother sees. They see you bigger and better than you can even see yourself. Now in the natural, isn't that true of, our, of a natural child? You know, when, when you have children, you don't just see them as children. I didn't just have a, you know, I, I didn't just see them as children, but I saw them one day becoming adults. I saw them one day becoming, you know, someone who's going to, be a leader or a parent or a father or a mother or have a family of their own or, or whatever that might look like or be. But I didn't just see, I had a vision, I saw in them what they, at that stage in their life that they could never even see in themselves. And that's what a spiritual father and mother does. They see in others what they can't even see in themselves. You know, I, I love this, last, this living, who's enjoyed the Living Legacy series? What a great thing and to have our up-and-coming communicators to be communicating the Word of God and talking about what it is to live a legacy. And uh, in fact, we're going to finish that next week. You might have noticed we've missed a week because of Father's Day, but next week we're going to finish it. And uh, Judith Mendes, <laughs> Judith Mendes is going to teach us on purity. Okay, remember the scriptures in Timothy, let no one look down on you, but set an example. And so, so Judith is going to talk about setting an example in purity and we're going to finish off the Living Legacy series. And I've loved being able to watch it. I obviously wasn't here, but I've loved being able to watch it because it speaks of people who, who are emerging, people who, who were, you know, I, I knew them, I knew many of them a long time ago, one of them particularly I knew when a very long time ago, um, but I've watched them grow and develop and mature, and it's a great privilege and a joy to be able to see a generation rising up, and as a church we should be excited about that, 
And it's kind of like, great, we've got a new... Man, we can see people begin to emerge and we can see people finding their feet and, and, and learning and developing the gift that is within them. How exciting and what a privilege that is. But it's because we see something. We see something and we, we're, we're going for that. Um, and so, you know, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 16 says this. It says, Therefore, from, no one we re- from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. Let me just leave it there. We know no one according... No, Paul is saying, I don't just see you as you are. I see you as you could become. I see what you could be. And, uh, we, you know, that's, that's the heart of God, isn't it? Um, you know, Jesus, uh, you know, God sent his angel to come and, and stand before Gideon and says, Hello, you mighty man of valor. And Gideon was anything but a mighty man of valor at that time. But, but the father heart of God not just sees you as you are, but he sees you as you can be. I thank God for people like John Dwight, my old youth leader, who saw in me something that I never even saw or wasn't even thinking of at the time. I remember him saying to me, he said, Russell, I want you to get involved on the youth committee. And he began to push me to get me to, to lead and do different things because he said, one day, he said, you're going to be leading a youth group. And that was the furthest thing from my mind at the time. But he saw in me what I even didn't see in myself. Can I just say, as a church, give us eyes to see. Let's not just see their, their mistakes and their falls and their slip-ups and their immaturity and other people's, you know, their struggles and their, their, their step backward steps, etc. But let's continue to see. Ask God to give us eyes to see, to continue to see people as they can become, and what they can grow into and what they can be. And listen, let, begin to give eyes to, to, that you can actually begin to see yourself, what you can become, because that's what the Father's heart is for you. He wants you to see what you can become, what you can be, what you can grow into. How many of you know that you're glad that you're not where you used to be, but you're not where you, you're not where you want to be, but you're not where you used to be? God's growing us. He's not finished with us because God sees us. And so we need, firstly, we need to be able to see. Now, that was a little bit too long if I'm going to do spiritual, wasn't it, Ben? You keep in check of the time there, mate. Okay, but that's a real important one, and they're all really important. But anyway, that's another story. Folks, firstly, you've got to see. The spiritual father sees. Secondly, the letter is what? P proud the right kind of proud I think a spiritual dad is proud in who you are and what you're becoming this and this is really about affirmation you read in Matthew chapter 3 verse 17 this is the heavenly father and this is Jesus about to be baptized and listen it says a voice from heaven who who's that voice it's God the father he said this is my son in whom I am well please. How many of you know at that moment, that was a moment of affirmation? There was a sense of, there's, there's, this is my son in whom I'm pleased. Listen to what um, Paul says about Timothy in Philippians 2, 19 and 20. He says, I hope in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you soon, that I may also be cheered, that I may also be cheered when I receive news about you, because I have no one else like him. I'm just so proud of Timothy. I have no one else like him. He's, he's the best. I'm so proud of Timothy. Who can see that in Paul's voice? And so this morning, I think we need to have a sense of pride in who people are becoming. And people go, well, you mightn't have grown up. They go, well, you know, oh, you don't want them to get a big head. How many times have you heard that? I don't, want you to get a, I don't like it when someone comes to give you a compliment. They go, listen, don't get a big head, but... That was, that was all right this morning. Listen, there's plenty of other things in life to knock someone down to size. God is well capable of doing, you know, life is capable of sorting out the big head in people's lives. You just make it your business to encourage and strengthen and affirm and lift people up around you. How about that? And so this morning, we need to be able to have the right sense of pride. I remember hearing Pastor Fred, my pastor at that time, Pastor Fred Evans, and I remember he was talking on the phone and he was recommending me to a church to become their senior pastor. And I happened to, the door was open, I could hear him as clear as a bell. And I remember he was sitting there and he was talking about, oh, I have no one else like him. Well, I was the only one on staff, so that wasn't great. But no, but no I remember just hearing him talk about... I know I'm not even going to go over what he was saying, but I remember at the time just thinking, I, was, I felt so affirmed. I felt so encouraged and strengthened. Can I just say, we need to have that right sense of pride. 
It's not blind. It's not, we're, not, we're, not, we're not blind, to, to the, but we, we see what they can be and we're proud of who they are and what they're becoming. Number three, I. Was that a little bit quicker, Ben? A little bit better? Okay, all right, mate, faster. Insight. S-P-I, insight. They have insights for your life, insights that will help you. A spiritual dad has insights. They, there's, a, there's another step you can take. There's a book you can read. There's a podcast that you can listen to. There, there's some advice that they can give. I remember Uncle George, my uncle who I lived with, he was my uncle, child, but he was very much a spiritual father in my life. And I remember having the steps that I was looking to make and decisions about Bible college. And I remember he sat down at the time and he gave me advice. He gave me insight. He said, wait another year and ask God to confirm it in your life. I remember that insight, that step was so helpful and so thankful to to me. Proverbs chapter 15 and verse 24. Listen to what it says. "For For those with insight, life is an upward path. For those with insight. And let me tell you, we have insights from people who've gone before. Spiritual mums and dads, they've, they've seen some things. They've been down some roads. And they have insight. They can see into things that you can't see. And so spiritual mums and dads have insight. S-P-I-R, rule. They help you rule your own spirit. A spiritual mum and dad helps you rule your own spirit. Proverbs 25 and verse 28 says, For like a city whose walls are broken down or broken through is a person who lacks self-control. How many of you know that self-control and learning to rule the greatest spirit, you rule your own spirit, is incredibly important? Incredibly important. And spiritual fathers and mothers come alongside and they teach us how to rule our own spirit. Listen to what Paul says in 1 Corinthians 9, 27. <clears throat> He says, but I discipline. What's that word? Discipline. You know, discipleship is made up of discipline. I discipline my body and bring it into subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I myself should become disqualified. There's a discipline involved. Colossians 2 and verse 5. It says, though I be absent in the flesh, yet when I'm with you in spirit, joying, joying and beholding your order and steadfast. That must be the wrong screw. That's, That's all right. First scripture was good enough. <laughs> the fact is, the fact is, there's a discipline and there's learning to rule our own spirit. And and let me tell you, it it comes from relationship. When you're a spiritual dad and you build relationships, you have a heart for a new generation. You have a heart to lift others up and see people grow in their faith. It involves relationship. And I thank God, again, I'm referring to him a couple of times this morning, but Pastor Fred, he was vulnerable with me. He, he let down his guard and he talked to me about some of his own struggles. He talked about some of the own battles that he'd had in his own life as I was going through some in my own life. And out of that, he was able to show me and help me in learning to rule my own spirit. And how many people need that? How many people are going through life and they need someone just to come alongside, not from a lofty position and not from a position of defeat. Oh, yeah, mate, I've, I've got no hope. You've got no hope. You're on your own. And it's nor, it's nor is it coming from a judgmental. They're not, going to, you know, they're not going to think less of you because you've talked about what is, what's going on in your life. They're not going to judge you for it, but they're going to identify with you and they're going to help you and give you steps and help you to rule your own spirit. And that's what a spiritual father and a spiritual mother does so they help you to rule your own spirit and it involves you know, and so move on to the next one time's moving on you next one is letter what i insist i insist that we give our best to god spiritual mums spiritual dads we insist that those that we're spiritual parents to who are spiritual dads to give their best to god they're not you're not going to take help you're not going to take the easy option not just going to let you off the hook. You're not going to be half-hearted. Do you know the Bible is full of advice and encouragement not to be half-hearted, but to be totally hearted? Let me just give, read them to you very quickly, and you can jot them down if you're taking notes. Deuteronomy 6.5 talks about serving God with all your heart. Proverbs 3.5 talks about trusting in the Lord with all your heart, trusting with all your heart. Pro, uh, Psalm 119 verse 34 talks about obeying with all your heart. Uh, Psalm 111 verse 1 talks about praising the Lord with... That wasn't very full-hearted this morning. With Praising the Lord with... Colossians chapter 3 and verse 23 talks about working with your whole heart. 
and, and workers unto God. So we're insisting as spiritual mums and dads, we're helping those who we're, who we're taking responsibility for. We're insisting on them giving God the very best. We're encouraging them forward. Again, it's not legalism. It's, it's, not, it's, it's not for your benefit. It's for their benefit. And so we are encouraging people forward. We're insisting for the best. The next letter, number six, is the letter T. It tells, a, a spiritual mum and dad tells the truth. John chapter 8, verse 32 says, You will know the truth, and the truth will what? Set you free. Will set you free. What sets you free? Truth will. Truth is the key to growth. Listen to what Ephesians chapter 4, verse 15 says. It says, instead, speaking the truth in love, we will what? Grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head that is in Christ. And just the truth, let me tell you, spiritual mums and dads, speaking the truth looks like this. There it is there. It's actually, it's actually a triangle. You speak the truth. Truth. There's no, there's no way around the truth. Truth is what's going to make people grow. But truth is not a club with spikes sitting out the end of it that you're going to beat them over the head until they're bloodied and senseless. Truth is not a club to beat someone with. Speak the truth in love. It's when you combine truth with love that we grow up into all things. Who, who can see that this morning? And so that's what spiritual mums and dads do. They, they speak the truth. They will always speak the truth. But they do it with a heart of love. And we'll come back to that one shortly. So we speak the truth. So there's direction. There's correction but they love you enough to tell the truth and let me tell you it's always for your benefit not for theirs when you're speaking the truth to someone it's for their benefit not yours next letter understands they understand the journey you're on spiritual mother and father they understand they understand the journey you're on they understand and you'll come into some of these categories this morning. They'll understand the sorrows and the joys. They understand life is about highs and it's about lows. They understand life's about delights and dangers and it's about abounding. And Paul says abounding and abased. In other words, sometimes there's plenty, sometimes there's lack. There's treasures and there's traps. There's suffering, there's satisfaction. And so a spiritual mother and father has understanding of people. There's empathy. There's compassion. There's mercy. And there's grace. Again, they're not condemning. They need to pull you down to size. They understand I understand that life, life is a journey and life does have its ups and downs and weaves and detours and things are unexpected. Plan B's, plan C's, oops, it's a plan D. That's what spiritual dads do. Proverbs chapter 24, four verse 16. It says, though the righteous fall seven times, they will rise again. And that's the heart of a spiritual dad. They recognise even though you might be having a down... And, they, and you might be having a rough trot and you might have having things that are just seem disastrous, but they know that you're going to rise again. And they're watching you. They're encouraging you. They're walking with you through that valley because they know that one day you're going to rise again. Who believes that this morning? That's the heart of a spiritual dad. How many of you need that in your life? How many want to be that in someone's life this morning? A spiritual dad understands. The letter A Stands for this, scratching the bottom of the barrel here, but it's a great point. They always point you to Jesus. A spiritual dad always points you to Jesus, spiritual father. They, not, they don't draw you to themselves. It's not about them. They're not wanting something from you. They're not going to use you. They're not using you, a spiritual mother or father is not using you to build their ministry. 
They're not using you to build their their life group and you've disappointed me and I'm not going so well because you're not going so... No, 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 no. This is about... They're always there to point you to Jesus. Who can see that this morning? Their default is always, it's not about me, it's about you. That's their default. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 6 says, I planted the seed, Apollos watered it, but who made it grow? God makes it grow. So it's all about him. Point it back to him. Point it back to the Father. Point it back to the Father through the Son. You're pointing it back to the the Father. You know, in the natural, your children are are not yours. (laughs) Thank God. (laughs) Your children are not yours. They are given to you for a time by God for you to raise them up, do your best, but ultimately your kids belong to God who believes that. And do you know what? The same with spiritual dads. Your spiritual kids are not yours. You don't own them. We don't control. It's not a heavy discipleship thing that we kind of like we're taking over. We always understand that they belong to God. I remember someone, an old pastor saying to me many years ago, well, he wasn't that old at the time, but it was was a great great little saying. He said, Russell, he said, love people dearly and hold them loosely. Love people dearly, hold them loosely. And even some, you know, pastors or shepherds or whatever term you want to put there I've seen over years where they can start to kind of like have ownership and control and I'm not talking about accountability and uh, but I'm talking about when something becomes it shifts from being a spiritual a healthy spiritual dad to something that starts to hang on too tight so we always Point people back to Jesus. You're doing this on behalf of the Lord when you're, spirit, when you're a spiritual dad. You're doing it for God. You're doing it for the Father. And they belong to him. Who believes that this morning? And then lastly, spiritual dads, they love you. They genuinely love you. Listen to what Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 4. He says, For I wrote to you, out of great distress and anguish of heart with many tears, not to grieve you but to let you know the depth of my love for you. How many of you can see that this morning? Paul had a deep love for the church in Corinth. And were they a perfect church? (laughs) Far from it. But he loved them. You see, love ties it all together. If you want to be a spiritual mum and dad, you've got to have this to tie it all together. Because if you don't, you'll, be, you'll, you'll feel used. You'll feel cynical. You'll get cynical because people don't always kind of turn out the way that you, you desire for them. And so this this morning is really important. As a, as a spiritual dad, you understand this. You, you've got to do it from a heart of love for the people that you're seeking to be a spiritual dad to. Otherwise, you'll feel used. You'll become cynical. You'll get jaded. You'll give up. You see, because love ties it all together because love is patient. Because love is kind. Love is long-suffering. Love doesn't keep any record of wrongs. You get this? So this has to undergird this whole idea of spiritual fathering. We love. So earthly fathers, what do we need to do for earthly fathers? We what? We honour them. Can I encourage you this morning? Find a way to honour your earthly father if your earthly father is still, mine's gone. 
And again, it's not, it, it actually, honour says more about you than it says about them. And I'm not making it about you, but when we honour someone, we're actually putting ourselves in a place where we're actually, through honouring them, we're honouring God. I want to encourage you to honour your earthly father. Find a way to do it today, if you can. We have a heavenly father. What's our heavenly father? What do we do with a heavenly father? We, we honour earthly fathers. We imitate our heavenly father. Who wants to be more like a heavenly father? We imitate him. But spiritual fathers, because there's not many of them. In fact, Paul says there's very few. I think this morning, if you've got spiritual fathers that you can think of, find a way to honour them today. Honour them. Thank God for them. But can I just say this morning, the, the, the direction of this message is this. I want to encourage you as a church, oh, I haven't got a ministry pastor, being a spiritual mum and a spiritual dad, it's one of the most important things you can do. If we're going to be a church that passes on a legacy to the next generation, we need a house full of spiritual dads and spiritual mums. Who can see that this morning? Who will be able to see how your eyes this morning? What do you see? You look around the church. You see people and very where can you where can you be involved where can you start to see who can see who can be proud who can have insights oh that's me I just want to do the one I just want to give insights no 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 no, no. it's a package who can teach others how to rule their own spirit Oh, yeah, I'm going to tell them, I'm telling them. I've seen some of those things. Oh, I'm going to, no, 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 this is relational. This is coming from a place of humility where I can walk alongside you, encourage you. Though they've fallen a hundred times, I'll rise again. They insist on you giving God's, God your best. I'll speak the truth. Oh, man, I can't wait to speak the truth. No, 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 you're going to speak it in love. That's what a spiritual dad does. He speaks it in love. He understands, understands life has its twists and turns. Always, always points you back to Jesus. And he loves I think this is what an earthly father should do for his earthly kids. What do you think? But let's take that this morning and apply that to spiritual dads. Father, I pray that this house would be a house of spiritual fathers. Father, speak to us today. Father, people who maybe feel like they're put aside or not quite sure how they even fit. Father, I pray today that we would understand that we can become spiritual dads, spiritual fathers but also we can become spiritual mothers. Father, help us to catch a vision for this. Give us insight. Inspire us today, Lord, that we can aspire to become the thing that Paul described as a lack in the life of this church, I pray. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. Can we all stand? today maybe you're here and you've never been introduced to you, you maybe knew you had an earthly father but you didn't even know you had a heavenly father maybe God was just just God thing it, him, whatever well Jesus taught us to pray he said when you pray, you pray our father do you know God as your father today and the way we know God as a father is 
is through His Son, Jesus. Jesus opened the door to the Father. Jesus made the way open to the Father. He actually said, He said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Think about that. Well, I'm going to get, maybe God's going to accept me because, you know, my, my good works outweigh my bad or, or whatever. No, 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 if, it's not possible. You can't get to the Father. And it's, it's actually, it's even beyond just saying the word God, it's actually Father. There's something intimate about that. There's something relational about that. There's something familial about that. And you can know God the Father through Jesus. And you, to do that, you have to put your trust and your faith in Jesus. Faith that he lived the life that you couldn't live. He lived a, a sinless, perfect life, which that ain't me. And then he died a death on the cross. He died a, a sinner's, a, a, not just a sinner's death, but a criminal's death on the cross. He paid the price that I should have paid because the Bible tells me the wages is my sinner's death, but Jesus paid it in full. And when I trust in him, but listen, then, then they put him in a tomb, but because he lived a sinless life, he rose again. Death couldn't hold him. And when we put our trust in Jesus, we too, our sin is paid for in Christ and death can't hold us. And when we die, we die to eternal life. And so this morning, do you know the Father? Because Jesus has made the way open to the Father. And if you've never put your trust in Jesus, to know that you can be saved, that you can become a follower of Jesus, that you can have a relationship with the Father. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. He said, no one, no one, no one comes to the Father but through me. If you want to do that this morning, just say, Russell, I want to invite, I want to put my trust in Jesus. I want to believe in Him today because I want to know that my Heavenly Father, if that's you, just while every head's bowed, every eye's closed, I'm only going to ask you to do this. I'm not going to call you out the front. I want you just to raise your hand and say, yeah, that's me, Russell. I want to believe in Jesus this morning. I want to know my Heavenly Father. If that's you, why don't you just raise your hand right now. Just hold it up high and say, Russell, that's me. I'm going to pray in a moment. Is there anybody who says, Jesus, I believe in you. I want to come to the Father through Jesus. Anybody, just hold that hand up high. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Did you wrestle with that? If you want to talk to someone more about that, please do. You can talk to me, Pastor Ben or Pastor Donnelly, somebody that looks like they know what they're doing around this place. We'd love to help you. We'd love to help you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Receive the word before this morning, church. How are we going for time, Ben? Are we doing all right? It's my official timekeeper here now. Well, we're going to close in a moment. We're going to receive our offering. We've been, uh, as a church, we've re receiving our legacy offering the last month. I was thinking about that. I've been away. Nikki and I haven't given our legacy offering yet. We're going to do that this week. But I was thinking about just this whole idea of legacy and legacy offering. You know, we've had a great legacy handed to us and we've celebrated that with our 100th anniversary. We've, we've spent a lot of time talking about that. We get that. But we, we get to decide what we now do with that legacy that's been handed to us. We get to decide the future of where this legacy goes. And as I said when I spoke on legacy before I left, we either, with a legacy that's handed to us, we either, we either burn it we or bury it or we build on it. And I happen to believe I'm in a church that would like to build on the legacy that's been handed to us. Can I hear a good amen? And, uh, you know, we've got a, there's a great cloud of witnesses that have gone before us. And they've run their race and they've run well and they've given us a great legacy. It's up to us now to pick that up and to lay aside every weight and run our race with perseverance and build on the legacy that's been handed to us. Maybe you've been in the church for a long time and maybe you've used language like, well, I've done my bit, um, did my time, 
You know, I've sacrificed in the past, I've sowed in the past. Can I just encourage you, keep sowing. The Bible says, though you sow in tears, you will reap with joy. You are going to surely reap. Who believes that? And so I want to encourage you, if you've been in the church a long time, I want to encourage you to sow again. And maybe you're new in the life of the church. I want to encourage you to join with those that have gone before. There's no greater way to get your heart into something than to put your treasure into it. The Bible says where your treasure is there, your heart is. If you're new, I want to encourage you. Become a part of carrying the vision and the purpose of this church with your giving. So I want to encourage you. Make good on your legacy offering. Do it soon. Do it, do it so that we can know where we stand, so that we can begin to set plans. But we do. We hold the future of this church literally in our hands. And I trust today that they're open hands. Whether they're open or closed makes such a difference to what we can do as a church. And, you know, you've got the brochure and all the things that we're looking to achieve in the life of the church. We simply need you to open your hand and say, I'm going to be a part of the legacy. So God bless you as you've considered that. And whether it's a, a one-off gift or whether you want to spread it out over the year, it's all there on that legacy little form there. It's on the seat in front of you. You can take one of those and ponder over that if you need to. But let me pray for you this morning. Father, we thank you for the opportunity of giving into something that lives outside of us and beyond us. And Father, I pray for this legacy offering. I pray for everybody who's given. Father, I pray that they would find the blessing of God through that. Blessing because of, the, uh, of what it enables to happen. But Father, also blessing through the very present, the blessing of God returning back into their life. Lord, we pray whether it's come out of lack or abundance that you will bless that which is given. Lord, for those that are considering what they do, Father, I pray that they would trust you, that they would go beyond where they've ever been before, that, Father, truly, that with the vision of this church, we would have the provision to see it fulfilled, we pray. So, Father, bless our church family. Bless this giving, we ask in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Lord, bless you as you respond to that. Uh, whether it's online, there's ways you can give up the back on the way out or you can use that brochure and you can fill it out on that. That's right, isn't it? Yeah, you can. Wonderful. Amen. Well, we're done. Ben's going to come and close the service. Worship team's going to rip it up with a great song to finish with. Haven't they done a good job this morning? Yeah. God bless you.